So I got myself some toys to play with since I'm not supposed to leave the house anymore. And that toy is the ESP8266-01S. The device is a programmable multi-purpose Wi-Fi module which can be configured to be a Wi-Fi station or access point. In today's episode I want to show you how to put together a very simple setup. I will also demonstrate how to use some of the built-in functions in order to turn the chip into an access point capable of sending and receiving UDP packets. If you want to try it at home, you're going to need a Windows PC with a Wi-Fi adapter, some breadboard wires and a TTL UART bridge like the CP2102. This allows direct communication with the chip without the need of an intermediate microcontroller like Arduino. The CP2102 is a USB to TTL converter. If connected to a PC over USB, it presents itself as a virtual COM port. The device has 5 pins TX and RX to transmit and receive data, ground and, conveniently, two different voltages of 3.3 and 5 volts. The labeling is self-explanatory, so there is no need to look for a datasheet. The data pins TX and RX allow communication with any device that supports UART as the Wi-Fi module does. The important thing here is to choose the right supply voltage because the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module operates on 3.3 volts. Connecting it to 5 volts would destroy it immediately. To keep things simple, I'm going to connect the converter to a breadboard first. The wires that represent the pins for 3.3 volt, ground, TX and RX have the colors green, blue, yellow and orange. Now let's take a look at the Wi-Fi module. The ESP8266 supports various interfaces for interaction, but for this demonstration we're going to stick to UART. The device can also be reprogrammed, but again that would make things too complicated, so we're going to use the pre-installed program. By default the chip is configured to act as a modem and can be controlled remotely using so-called AT commands. The documentation of the entire AT command catalog might be a little overwhelming, so I selected a small subset that would help us turn the device into a wireless access point. The pin layout is quite simple. From left to right and top to bottom, there is ground, GPIO2, GPIO0, RX, TX, chip enable, reset and VCC. The two GPIO pins and reset are only needed for programming purposes and can be left disconnected. Enable needs to be pulled high, the rest should be obvious. I'm going to connect the Wi-Fi module to the breadboard as well. The yellow wire is used for transmission on both devices. Don't forget that the RX and TX wires need to be crossed over between the devices. With everything wired up, the CP2102 can be connected to the PC. The UART converter doesn't need special drivers, so once it's plugged in, Windows should automatically identify the device as a COM port. You can check the assigned port number in the device manager. Keep in mind that the value of the port number is somewhat random, so there is no guarantee that the next time you plug it in, it's going to stay the same. Remember the ID, you're going to need it in a minute. In order to establish a connection over the COM port, I'll use a software called HTERM. But any other piece of software that allows you to do serial communication will do. In a real application, you would probably use some API in the programming language of your choice. After firing up HTERM, most of the default settings should be alright. Make sure the baud rate is set to 115,200 with 8 data bits, 1 stop bit and no parity. You also need to enable carriage return plus line feed to be sent on enter as the chip uses that sequence to identify the end of a message. Select the port as specified in the device manager and connect. The easiest way to find out if the Wi-Fi module is alive is to disconnect it from the power supply for a second and then reconnect. On startup, the device should send some couple of hundred characters of garbage followed by the word ready. That means it's up and running and waiting for AT commands and there is a lot of them. Luckily, we're only going to need a few, so let me give you a quick overview. The simplest command is AT. The device returns OK and nothing else happens. This can be used to quickly check if the module is active. After that, we need to set the correct mode. For this demonstration, I'm going to use mode 2, which configures the module to be an access point. Once the device is in access point mode, 
it's time to define the SSID, password, channel and encryption type. Setting the encryption type to 4 enables WPA2 or alternatively WPA1. The device will now broadcast the SSID. It will also automatically assign IPs to connecting stations. For this demonstration, I want to send a UDP packet directly to the device, so I'll need the Wi-Fi module's local IP address. This can be done with the following command. My access point has the IP 192.168.4.1. Since my computer has a built-in Wi-Fi adapter, I'm going to use it to connect to the access point. But of course, this also works with a phone, tablet, PC or even another ESP8266. This command shows all connected devices. As you can see, my computer was assigned the IP address 192.168.4.2. The next command enables multiple sockets. I'm only going to use one, but it's good to know that the ESP8266 supports multiple connections. This is especially important for TCP. In order to create a socket on the device, this command is used. It works for both TCP and UDP. There is a variety of things you can do here, so uh, if you need more details, you might want to check out the official documentation. I'm going to create a socket with ID3 for UDP, which accepts packets from all remote IPs and ports on local port 4567. The number 2 at the end indicates that outgoing packets are not restricted to the specified remote host. And that's it. We can now try to send data between the station and the access point. I'm going to do this using a PowerShell console. The function expects the IP address and port of the remote host, as well as some text. When the message arrives at the Wi-Fi module, it's sent back to the computer over UART and then displayed in HTERM. It will also return the ID of the socket and the number of received bytes. Sending packets from the access point to the station is also possible. To do that, I'll start a socket with the PowerShell console that listens to port 5679. The transmission works in two steps. The first step is sending the following command. This tells the access point to get ready to send on socket ID3 10 bytes to the specified remote host. The next 10 bytes will be buffered and sent as a UDP packet once complete. If you're wondering why I announced 10 bytes but only entered the numbers 1 through 8, the last two bytes are the carriage return and line feed, which are interpreted as part of the UDP packet. Finally, let's do some cleanup. Closing a running socket with a specific ID can be done with this command. This should cover the basics. The variant that I got is the 01S. That means that it's got more flash memory than the usual type. As far as the range is concerned, I'm positively surprised. My phone connects easily through a 20 cm concrete wall and rumors say that distances up to half a kilometer are possible under perfect conditions. Be that as it may, it is clear that this is a pretty powerful yet dirt cheap little gadget that opens up endless possibilities. This certainly wasn't my last take on the subject. If you found this video helpful at all, please like and subscribe. Also, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to answer. Stay safe and see you soon.